Hello everyone and welcome to part three of the mail call for January of 2019 in February. Not really as much uh, mail as I usually have gotten on some mail calls because most of the mail really centered around uh, events of you know some of the fishers in the community and some of the uh, um, some of the current configuration. So overwhelming was that that it was just you know people have seen that uh, real time on there. So let's get to some of the other things here. Uh, when are you off on your travels? Some people have said, "Oh, you've been talking about that uh, for years." Well, the time had to be right for me on that. And in 2019, the time is finally right for me. But I'm missing one big component. I don't have a really good travel rig. I made a well. I didn't make the wisest choice when it came to picking that panel van. Although I outfitted that nicely, it has a nice sleeping area in the back. It's very small. It's not suitable. What I like to do is uh, finish paying that off and then uh, put that up for sale and move that on. I think that vehicle is very popular in the marketplace. Those little ProMasters are good for painters and uh, tradesmen, single solo tradesmen, tradeswomen. So I think I won't have any problem moving that along, but I need to get a nice travel rig now. I've had to really fight to save some money here. You know, December was a personally a pretty costly uh, month as was part of January. So I'm not, you know, I don't want to raid retirement and other things to pay for it. I'd like to uh, just acquire the money working to be able to get that uh, rig. I also want to up my sights a little bit. I've usually been buying rigs in about the $5,000 range, like the Rolling Rancho, the 1974 GMC motorhome. I had the classic yellow one. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can go into my uh, playlist about the RVing. You can see my prior RVs, the purchase of them, actually going out and meeting the people and buying them. And then, of course, the second one was the Rolling Rancho going to Reno, and picking up uh, the 1988 Coachman uh, camper van and bringing that one uh, back. So I, but I want something that's a little nicer. Each of them was about five thousand dollars. I want something nicer. Uh, I want to get something that's a little newer and a little more comfortable for uh, travel. So you know, I'm not any big rush uh, on that. It will be this year. Why do you? Here's uh, question number. Why do you take tips? Do you expect us to buy you an RV? Of course not. Of course not. To me, there's a difference between coming on to YouTube and expecting people uh, on YouTube to supply your daily food, shelter, and clothing needs. Okay? I don't believe that it's the responsibility of YouTube to do that for the individual. But... If you want to run that program, I think that you have the perfect right to do that. But you do suffer the consequences of living a life where you depend on other people for your daily sustenance. That's going to run into a situation eventually where people see that you're not doing anything yourself to try to advance your prospects for being self-sustaining. And therein is the there is therein lies the end game of what I call e-begging. It almost always terminates to an end because people will support you over the short term. People will support you when they sense that the need is real. But what people will not do here on YouTube is support somebody over the long run that's not willing to uh, make moves to support themselves either through education employment training, or just plain getting out there and getting a job, period. Okay? The difference with tips is, it's like, hey, I enjoy your stream. Dinner's on me, or, or a beer. But you never come out and tell people, give me, give me, give me. You might have a link that shows up periodically, but... You don't tell people, it's, you know, that you're depending on this for, for your daily upkeep. And support. This is just a tip in the truest sense of here. I'm enjoying your content. I'm enjoying your stream. 
have a beer on me, and I think that's the right way to uh, right way to have things. I don't want people to buy me an uh, RV. Uh, let's see. Explain something to me. How in God's name is Missy Jen still with you? You're like some kind of frat boy gone wild. Seriously, do you need psychological help? Maybe. Maybe. I mean, there are some people that speculate. We have a lot of uh, amateur psychologists in the uh, various chats here and on YouTube. And you will always have people forever diagnosing people's maladies. I tend to be out there a lot. A very public presence on on uh, streets and on uh, YouTube, and I understand how people can think. You know, is there, you know, or is there something wrong with you that you're impervious to feedback to people? Uh, you can't be this insensitive over the long run to some people's feelings about you. I understand that. Honestly, I don't know. Maybe I do. You know, you never know. I don't ever dismiss anything out of hand. Now, as far as the frat boy comment goes, yeah, I enjoy life. I enjoy being out. I enjoy, I enjoy engaging people. You know, such as such is the case. So it's not going to be something for everybody, and I like to have fun, and I like to laugh, too. So uh, let's see. Is there going to be a big meetup in Vegas? That would be epic. Uh, why would you be dissuaded bringing certain people to Las Vegas? Why would you be dissuaded by the few sour pusses out there on YouTube who enjoy telling other people what to do, do what you want? Well, there's a certain point you also have to be sensitive, especially when there's very raw topics that have polarized people and, and given a lot of personal pain to people on YouTube. I'm not going to denote what they are. We all know those great big dividing points that have totally marginalized some chats to the point that they almost become hate-watching and all that. You reach that kind of level, there's probably where there's smoke, there's fire. I always dream of days when things might be better and people can get along and we can own the stuff and put it behind us and move on. But I'm not the one to dictate when other people move on. Therefore, a little bit of sensitivity is definitely needed. You know, a little bit of sense of time and time heals all. Well, we'll see. You know, and that's my response to that. I cannot be insensitive to a feeling in the community. Okay? Um... Here's a question I got about meeting Dave the fisherman. Was Dave really ill-looking when you got there? The answer is yes. The answer is clearly yes. There's no making any bones about it. As far as Dave's particular medical issues, I'm not a nosy person. I'm not one to uh, stick my nose into people's personal affairs, much more, much less their medical affairs. But I have been around and walked the earth long enough to recognize somebody that has real health issues. You know, I'm not that totally oblivious to the realities of the way someone appears in their totality. Okay? Uh, here's somebody that help. Hey, Rosie, here's an idea. How about you just stick to your old crappy radios and your ultra-tiny bikinis? At least I can enjoy... Both of them. Well, it's a variety channel, my friend. You get it all down here. Yes, you get uh, you get your bikinis. But I've noticed people on my channel, they'll just pick and choose the things they want to watch. i got some people on this channel, all they watch and comment on is moonshine videos. I have enormous playlists with moonshine videos. Some people only want to watch the metal detecting. They don't even turn on a notification. They don't even look at a video. Unless it has metal detecting. Other people only like the things with the bikinis and the baking and things. They love that. The space girl from Planet Triple X. They live for that kind of stuff. Some people just want to travel. Some people could care less until such time as I get an RV again. There truly is something for everybody. So I don't, I don't marginalize myself with just crappy old radios and ultra-tiny bikinis. Yeah, it's fun to push the envelope, and I do love it. 
But there's so much more to the channel than that. Um, here, here's the last question for this month's mail call. Why do you get uh, so triggered and you chimp out when people say you represent the trans community? This seems to be a common theme of yours that you throw, oh, you throw off the mantle of responsibility by wanting to just be seen as another person on YouTube and not a representative of your community. Well, she said, whether you like it or not, you own that. Very true. But owning it and claiming to represent it are two different things. I've never been one to preach a moral high ground on YouTube. I've never been one to expect any more favors for the trans community than anybody else. I've not uh, advocated for some special carve-out right, some specialness of us. In my opinion, to me, representing the trans community is going out and showing real everyday life with an older trans woman out there engaging it in a humorous, fun, and lively way. Does that represent? It probably represents in a truer sense than people that want to do uploads and will just sit there and, you know, in a talking head format and tell other people the way they should or should not uh, act. Walk the walk or talk the talk? I sure think that I walk the walk. So am I a perfect representative for my community? I'm probably the worst of the worst in that regard, but uh, I guess sometimes it takes the worst to appreciate the truly best. So if nothing else, maybe I perform that function in the community. I want to thank you guys for being along for the January mail call, and uh, stay tuned. Always more to come.